the EIA, approximately 1,148 million cubic feet of CO2 was released annually during World War II. Ever since I was young, I've always wanted to become a marine biologist. So when I realized that we were doing a project on our passions, I was obviously thrilled. However, I was having some difficulty connecting my passion, fish, and World War II together. So I realized that I had to broaden my topic, and that led me here, discussing an issue that has only increased since World War II. As World War II rolled around, the bustling need for more machinery also produced the need for more coal. Now, where do all of those greenhouse gases go? If you're thinking the atmosphere, you're on the right track. But a quarter of all CO2 released annually gets absorbed by the ocean. Now, scientists were researching, were researching the benefits of this happening, but in the process discovered that this was changing our water chemistry, or the pH of the water, in a process called ocean acidification. Now, this has only increased in the past decade, but World War II greatly impacted the time and rate at which the ocean would acidify. If citizens or other people during World War II had been more aware of the damage that they were causing our environment, maybe this wouldn't be such a pressing issue. According to Jennifer Morton, science education specialist, she states that this will not only affect our ocean, but the marine organisms that live in it as well. Organisms like scallops, abalone, mussels, clams, crabs, other kinds of shellfish, and plankton that make up a great part of our ocean ecosystem. This affects them because in order to survive, they need to create shells. And there are two very important molecules that they need to make to compose their shells. But ocean acidification has rapidly decreased the amount of these molecules which makes it increasingly harder to find. This especially affects the larval stages of these species because in order to survive and grow, they need to create a home, a shell, a Hanneke says deep. This was an experiment done by scientists. They placed a healthy plankton shell in ocean water that they found was slightly more acidic than the basic water that we find in the ocean every day. This, they took pictures over a period of 42 days I found that on the 42nd day, the shell had become thin, weakened, and diminished. This is the kind of plankton that live in our oceans today. The kind of plankton that whales and other creatures depend on. Now, this doesn't only affect these types of organisms. This affects our coral reefs. Yes, our coral reefs. The ones that we go into to, to go on vacations, to see the organisms that reside, the brilliant, spectacular life of our ocean ecosystem. These types, these, these types of coral reefs. Then 50 years or so, if we <coughs> stop ocean acidification, our coral reefs will go from this to this. A desolate, dead ocean ecosystem. This is what our grandchildren will be brought up with. A dead ocean. Is this what we want? No. According to Smithsonian, not only will this affect our biodiversity, this will affect our fisheries, our aquaculture, threatening food security for billions of people, not to mention tourism and other sea-related economies. That's right, not, billion, not millions, but billions of people will be affected by ocean acidification and are being affected by ocean acidification. Now, as I said before, according to the EIA, approximately 1,000 148 million cubic feet of CO2 was produced annually during World War II. Now, to bring some understanding to this, that's approximately 15 billion liters of CO2 being produced annually during World War II. So if you thought that World War II only impacted politics and the economy, you're wrong. World War II greatly impacted our ecosystems and environments as well. Thank you, my name is Molly Ritter.